Okay, I think that's our, our signal to start. So <laughs> hi everyone um, and welcome. Uh, we, this is a, a program for the Asian American Bar Association of the Greater Bay Area. Um, and we're really excited to be doing this uh, and, and presenting this, um, how to find your first legal job. Um, and so let's just get right into it. Um, my name is Kelly Matayoshi. Uh, I'm a partner at Frella Braun and Martel. Uh, doing business litigation and employment, um, and, and I am also on the ABBA board, um, and I graduated from law school in 2012. Um, so we're just going to go around and, and quickly uh, introduce, each of the panelists will introduce themselves, um, you know, where they work, when they um, graduated from law school, um, and so let me turn it over to Judge Lee. Hi, my name is Jane Lee, and I am a supervising civil judge. I'm also the co-chair of the Law Students Committee. It's a new one for the California Asian Pacific American Judges Association. It's CAPAJA for short, and we are really trying to reach out to law students. We're sorry, uh, Kelly, I'm going to make a pitch, but we no. really, we really want to be there for you. Um, so later on, when you pass the bar, we'd love to swear you in. We would love to have you extern or intern for us. Uh, we'd love to meet you. And, and our goal for this year is to make sure that every API law student in the state gets a chance to meet an API judge, whether it's remotely, in person, through email, so whatever. Go ahead, next person. Thank you. Uh, Sean, you wanna go next? Great. Um, my name is Sean Wani. I'm the general counsel for OpenGov. We are trying to make our state and local governments, and we even sell to some special districts and courts, trying to make them more effective and accountable. We have a hosted multi-tenant cloud solution, which basically provides best of breed Silicon Valley technologies to our state and local governments. Um, I've been with the company for four years, but I'm an old person. I graduated in 93 uh, from Santa Clara and worked a whole host of jobs all in Silicon Valley from being at Apple for eight years, Oracle for three years. I started a couple of companies and then I've been the GC for quite a few companies um, two of them that have went public. So it's hoping to do the same and have a nice run and also doing something where I'm excited about the mission here, which is we get to talk to these incredibly hardworking public servants who just need technology to help them do their jobs better. And that's what we're here for. Great. Oh, real quick and a quick pitch. I'm, I'm looking for a summer intern for next summer. <laughs> See, so it, it pays to uh, come to these programs. <laughs> Okay, and last but not least, Amit. Hi, um, my name is Amit Kurlikar, uh, University of Michigan class of 2001. I was actually at uh, a big law firm for 10 years and where I was involved in the summer hiring there. And I'm now at the California Attorney General's office where I run the summer program uh, for the criminal appeal section. Whenever I have a chance, I try to do actual work too, but the, the internship thing takes up, takes up a lot of time. Um, but we are also in the middle of hiring. Um, one out for those of you one else, we'll probably end of this, but I think you guys can't start applying until December first. But we will definitely save some spots. So um, we hope you hope you keep some up. Great. Um, look at that. You guys are already getting pitched for jobs. <laughs> so um, you know, we try to get some variety in this panel and have uh, you know someone from the judiciary, um, in house, um, public law, and so. Um, you know, as, as one else, you probably don't know a lot about, you know, what, what it's kind of like to work in these industries. Um, and so I'm going to have the panelists kind of describe for you um, what it is, what it's like to, to work where they work, um, you know, what their typical day looks like, um, and kind of what, why, they, why they like it. Who wants to go first? Sean. I can go first. Um... Being, I actually skipped the law firm experience and, um, and went straight in-house. 
partly because uh, my employer, Oracle, was paying for my law school at the time, so that I had to work um, during the daytime. But the nice thing about working in-house, not only you get to work in a cool environment like this, where way back there is a bar, and there's a pool table, and a ping pong table, a foosball table, and you know all the perks of working in a Silicon Valley office once we go back to the office. But one of the nice things about working in-house is I honestly say about 50% of my job has nothing to do with the law. It's just providing good, sound, practical business advice. And you're probably thinking, well, how do I, how do I get that when I'm, um, I'm just graduating or I'm a law intern? Well, part of it is doing these internships because you get some experience, you get to interact with all business units within the company and learn what they do. But one of the nice things about being an in-house lawyer is you basically touch everything in the company. You sign and review every document that the company signs. You work with every group. And so you get a chance to really understand how the business works and how you can be a real team player and add value. And so one of the things I love about it is I feel like I'm wearing five different hats and it's not necessarily the legal hat in what I do. And it's very exciting and challenging. And I recommend everyone at least try for one of their summer internships to try to do something in-house. Um, if Sean's done, I'll go next. And it's only because I think I have sort of an opposite perspective. I went to law school to do law. I never wanted the business side of anything. I always just wanted to do legal work. So I was actually at a big firm for 10 years. I actually, I'm one of the few who have really loved it. I, I actually enjoyed the firm I was at. Um, but as I got more senior, it got to be more about business development and less about sort of the actual like grind of legal work, which is again, what I loved. So I went to the government where I don't have any clients. I don't have to worry about that. And I can just write my briefs. I do appellate briefs. So I can just write my briefs, do my oral arguments, go to court. And that is my entire life. And I'm very happy about it. So if you actually love the legal side of things and you, um, and you just want to do litigation, really. And appeals litigation is different from trial litigation. And we can have a separate conversation about that later. But appeal litigation in particular, I love. And uh, it's a really a unicorn job. It's hard, to, it's hard to just do appeals for a living. Um, so. Yeah, that's why I'm here. Okay, I, I'm going to build on that. So I am uh, the supervising civil judge. I handle about, I'd say about 650 unlimited cases, unlimited civil cases, and a number of limited civil cases. So what is my day like right now? Um, I'm a direct calendar judge, which means that I do trials as well as motions. So basically my day is, my day is busy, <laughs> but um, I, I really love my job. I feel like I can, I, I still, it's funny. I still think of myself as a lawyer, meaning, you know, I get to practice the art of law. And it's, it's, I'll go a little bit more into what this consists of a little bit later, but um, so how did I get my job? I was appointed by the governor, which is usually how you get these jobs. And why did I decide to? And I think it's, it's what I'm going to call sort of the logical sequence uh, from what Amit was saying, after practicing for a number of years, I decided, oh, what would it be like to actually make decisions? And so I get to be on the other side. Awesome. And I'll provide a little perspective on, on the law firm life, uh, building on what Amit said. <laughs> um, uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, and I, I've only worked at, at law firms. I, I mean, I, I summered at Frella and then started and have been here. So um, but, you know, I, I, I really enjoy working at a law firm. It, it is, it's hard, you know, it's, it's a lot of hours. And as anyone who works at a law firm will tell you, it's, it's kind of depressing to take, um, to kind of bill your life in six minute increments. <laughs> that's like, that's like the worst part of, of the job is having to, to bill for your time. Um, but it's, it's really rewarding too. Um, you know, we, we work a lot in teams. Um, and so if you, if you like working with other people, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of that, there's a lot of collaboration. And you really get to do everything in, in litigation, um, uh, you know, from the, the pleading, pleadings, if you like, you know, writing briefs and all of that, there's plenty of that. Um, as you get more senior, there's lots of opportunities um, to have more stand-up experience, um, taking depositions, arguing motions, 
um, you know, try and, and all the way up to trial. Um, and so, um, you know, th there's a lot um, that you can do. You learn a lot. Um, and I'll say it's, it's, it's a very common um, for law students to kind of start um, at law firms because I, I do think it, it does provide a lot of good training. Um, it, it's, a good, it's a good starter job at least. A lot of people leave, it, 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 a lot of people also leave the law firm, but it's a good place to start, um, get your feet wet, you know, have mentors who are reviewing your work, giving you guidance. Um, and it's, it's a lot more structured environment in, in terms of training um, when you're, you're starting out at least. Um, okay. Um, so, so let's go into kind of, you know, if somebody were to come and work um, for you um, at, at your, your uh, place of employment, um, you know, what would that, what would that look like for them? You know, what do um, uh, summer interns or externs um, do um, and, and what are, um, oh, actually, let's just start there. Let's just start with like, what would they be doing? <laughs> um, Judge Lee, do you want to kick this one off? Uh, sure. So I, I want to do a plug for externing or interning, and I, I'm still not sure what the difference is. And I think what you get is you get uh, two things. You get volume. So every day I have about five motions and I have at least 10 cases. I may also have a trial. So in a week, I think you get to see about 50 cases. And you get to see a variety because we pretty much do everything. So we can have uh, right now a colleague of mine has a six week inverse condemnation trial and I have a what is it a three week water rights trial so it can be really complex it can be simple but you just get a, a real variety. So what we've done for the first time is we have created a uh, one place where you can email if you want to extern or intern uh, with a state court judge in California. So we actually have a listserv of all the API state court judges in California, and we counted. We finally counted them. There are about 132 of us, which is really exciting. Now we get to like now we can have dinners. We there are enough of us where we can actually get together and it, it doesn't look sparse. And so I will put that down. But if you send us something through that email, then um, we you can tell us which county you want to be in, right? For I know some of us, uh, some of you live down south. You can also ask for a particular judge. You can also ask for a particular area also. You can ask, and then here I'm gonna distinguish between two, one is the specific practice area that the judge may be involved in, and two, a number of us were US attorneys, a number of us were partners in big firms, a number of us were intellectual part, uh, property uh, partners. And so you can also, ask for anyone with specific experience. And so we will put all that down, but if you're thinking about it, uh, this is a way you could start out. So uh, I can give you the exact spiel that we give our interviewees whenever we uh, talk to them about the summer program. Um, we try to treat our interns as if they are first year lawyers out of the gate. So when they show up, uh, so what we do is we take we get briefs from uh, people who've been convicted, challenging their convictions or sentences or some other aspect of a criminal judgment against them. So we take one of these briefs, something pretty conceptually simple like a sentencing issue, probation condition, or a you know insufficiency of evidence on a, on a minor felony. We give it to an intern. Intern reviews it, does the legal research to determine whether any of the claims have merit, and then writes a responsive brief. And that respondent's brief could be anywhere from 15 pages to 30 something pages. Uh, they write the draft, they give it to a one on one direct supervisor who's a line attorney, like one of us. We review it, give it back to them. They incorporate the edits until it's in a shape where we think it's ready to file. We file it, they move on to the next brief. Over the course of a 10 week summer, they'll end up doing anywhere from three to six briefs. Uh, also, we have an oral advocacy component where they come in and they at least do a moot court. If you have been able to take evidence by the time you get to our summer, 
then you we can actually certify you to argue in the California Court of Appeal. So you will have a real live Court of Appeal argument. Um, we, we will give you someone's case, we'll hand it off to you, and you'll go into court and you'll argue it before three honest to God judges. And um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty fulfilling experience. Um, we don't pay you, but in terms of the actual experience, we think it's pretty awesome. Kelly, do you want to go or I can go? All right. Well, uh, very similar to Amit, when you become an intern, you essentially are indoctrinated into the company. What does that mean? So we put you through a four-day boot camp, just like we do with every new employee in the company, where you learn about the company, you learn about our products, you learn about our people. Um, and so you get put right in like every new employee that's there because you are an employee. Um, and unlike a meet, we actually pay you. I can't really say it's much, but we, we do give you a little bit. But uh, so we one, we want you to learn about the company. Number two is, is my philosophy is, is that the only way you're gonna really learn and enjoy is hands-on. And so a lot of what we do is transactional work. So there are playbooks. Fortunately, they were written by a lot of my interns from the past. I've had great, great success with interns where you read the playbooks in terms of how to review certain documents that we're looking at. And it could be a, as basic as a non-disclosure agreement, moving all the way up to negotiating a master services agreement with our customers. So you learn the playbooks, you understand how, how to apply the playbooks because you actually are hands-on reviewing real documents that come in for us to review. By the end of the summer, you're actually given the opportunity to be able to negotiate with the other side, usually either with myself or one of the attorneys on my staff uh, listening in. But we also want you to give, have the ability to not just do the writing, but also being able to negotiate and reach a conclusion. So that's, that's one thing that we do. The other thing I like is that there's so many different things in the company that that you can learn from is I always like to give our interns one research project that they're interested in. So one uh, intern did a whole thing on CCPA, the new California Consumer Privacy Act and how that would apply to us. I had one who was very interested on the finance side that did a whole uh, research paper on um, revenue recognition rules for the types of um, uh, sales contracts that we do. And then I had another one who actually wrote our Confluence page, which a confluence is a way to be able to share information amongst the company. And they didn't want to do any research, but they were interested on sort of the journalism part. And they wrote our confluence page describing what the law department does to the rest of the company. So there's always a writing component to that um, from my perspective too. But really the sky's the limit. There's a bunch of things that come in. There are a bunch of things that we need to address, maybe need to research. And we get our interns to start um, looking at that stuff right away. Awesome. Um, and uh, I'll just, I'll put a plug in for the judicial externships because <laughs> that was actually my first, uh, my one all summer job. I, you know, and, and just um, even if you can't do it, do it during the summer, I just think it's like the most valuable or one of the most valuable experiences you, know, you can have um, as, as a law student, especially if you're interested in litigation, which uh, sounds like uh, some of you are just to kind of have that view from um, the other side um, is, is it's really, you know, when you start practicing in your, um, you know, writing briefs, kind of knowing a little bit about what happens, you know, when you submit this brief and, you know, how the judges are, you know, think and approach um, these issues it is really invaluable. So I, I really do hope that you guys um, consider um, applying for judicial externship. Again, you know, the summer is a great time to do it, um, but you can also do it during the school year as well. So don't uh, don't miss out on that opportunity. Um, you know, as, as for uh, law firms, um, you know, law firms tend to have summer classes. Um, so you, you know, you're with a, a group of, um, of other law students. Um, you know, I will say that most law, law firm jobs are through OCI, which you don't get to until um, you actually finish your final <laughs> summer. So um, that's how it, it usually works. You can get jobs at a law firm your 1L year. They're just a lot more rare and harder to find. Although I know that there's um, a good amount of, of law firms out there that have programs for it, but you'll have to kind of dig around um, to find them, All right? Um, 
And um, all right, that's one call. <laughs> Uh, but but you know what, what you do at a law firm um, is at least how how Pharrella structures it. Um, you know you, you are assigned to an attorney um, who um, who gives you projects. You know I'll say a lot of the projects are research projects because that's something that's easy to to plug um, law students in. Our cases you know span much much longer than your summer, <laughs> and so you're really only getting a, a very you know kind of a taste um, of it. So it's hard to kind of plug you into larger projects, which is why um, you guys get a good number of, of research projects, um, but hopefully, you know, research that turns into, you know, writing part of the brief, um, you know, one of the arguments in the brief, for example. Um, uh, and then, you know, we, we have, we try to get you guys pro bono experience. Um, it, it is a little harder to get that more stand-up um, experience that I know that you guys are, are all looking for. Um, but, um, you know, so these uh, law firm summer jobs, you know, tend to be more uh, thinking towards the long term because hopefully, ideally, right, <laughs> this turns into an offer to return um, as, as a first year uh, attorney. So that's really, you know, you're kind of, you're, you're in there, you're trying to impress people um, because you would, you know, most people are looking for that offer um, at the end of the summer. So um, it's, it's kind of just a taste of, of what it's like um, to be um, a lawyer at that law firm. Um, really just a taste <laughs> um, but uh, it's you know hopefully giving you a good idea of, of, of what life would look like um, as a law firm associate and then hopefully you know, getting an offer of it. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, uh, what type of, of skills um, you know would be useful um, externing or, or interning at, at your job uh, at, at, at you know your place of employment. Um, does someone want to Start. I'll, I'll let me. I'll, oh, oh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I haven't gone first yet, so I figured that I would do it this time. Um, so our job, as you can probably tell, is research and writing intensive. So I mean, part of the part of the internship is we are going to try to teach you to be a better writer, but there is a certain sort of floor level that you have to come in with. I mean, we're going to assign you on real cases with real supervisors, and we have to make sure that you can kind of run with the flow of the cases as they go. Um, so one of the, the biggest thing I look for, and there's three of us coordinators, we all kind of have different things, but the biggest thing I look for is, can this person write at a level where we can teach them to be like, good writers by the end of the summer? Um, that, that's a big consideration. Another one is, are these, are they going to be able to take criticism of their work? Are they gonna be professional about that? That's a huge deal. We, when we edit each other's work, we are, you know, we, the edits are pretty rigorous. And you can imagine if a first year is coming in, it's going to be, excuse me, sorry about that. It's going to be, um, it's going to be just, you know, just as rigorous. And um, that, that's, that's another thing we look at. And then we also want to make sure that you're going to benefit from our program. And so for us, that means one of the big focuses of our interviews is, why do you? Why are you applying to our office? And usually the answers we want to hear are something along the lines of, "I want to be a better legal writer. I want to know what government service is like. Um, I want to one day work in criminal law. Anything which kind of shows that our particular internship is valuable to you, uh, I think is is really, uh, you know, because again we're not paying you, so we want to know that like we don't have that many spots. We want to know that you're gonna enjoy doing this for us as much as we're gonna enjoy having you. I'll I'll chime in really quick, um, and then Sean, how about you, you can go next? Sounds good. Um, you know, I, I think um, especially as a one L, um, I think there's a, a good recognition that you know you, you've only done one year of law school, and so that so you are not going to be, or I mean, maybe you are, <laughs> uh, but yeah, you, know, you most likely are not going to have you know the the best you know research writing you know oral advocacy skills yet. Right, you know, you'll get there, but you know, at this point in your career, um, you know, you're not not quite. <laughs> um, so, you know, this is really the summer is really the time to kind of work on on those and and get feedback on them. Um, but but in terms of you know what skills will will help you, um, you know, I think communicating um, is really important. Um, you know, that's that's something that is, is very much in your control. 
Um, and it, it's never good when, you know, I kind of sit here and start thinking about a case and then go, oh, like, wasn't, <laughs> wasn't I supposed to get that, <laughs> that research assignment? Um, and, and like, what's happening with it? Um, or, um, or I get, I get um, uh, something back and it's, it's not what exactly what I asked. And it's, and it's because, and it's partly my fault because maybe I didn't explain it well, but it's, it's also because you know, the person um, who was working on it wasn't asking questions and, and didn't you know, dive in and then think, oh wait, you know, what's going on? I, I, should, I should ask about this. And so you know, it, I know it, it can be very intimidating um, as a law student to kind of be, you, know, you, you feel like you don't want to take anyone's time, you know? uh, but really like, you know, take that time because it, it'll, it'll benefit you in the long run. Um, to really, you know, communicate about like what you're doing, if you're running into issues, if you're not going to hit a deadline, you know, saying it in advance rather than having someone ping you and say, you know, what happened to that? Um, you always kind of want to be, be ahead and, and almost over uh, communicate. Um, it, it's, it's very rare that, that someone gets criticized for over communicating <laughs> um, uh, with us. So um, communication, I think, is, is really key. Yeah, I would add, you know, when you're applying, you have to think about your audience that you're applying for. And, and so in the Meets case, it's all about writing. But, you know, writing is one of those traits that you need to show no matter where you go. So, you know, making sure your resume and your cover letter don't have any typos that just that show that you can write is very important. You'd be amazed how many people don't, don't spend enough time on that. Um, number two is, is when you're going in-house, you should know a little bit about the company that you're applying for. Um, so, you know, we are very excited about our mission and we have, you know, people who are passionate about wanting to help governments, right? So if you have an angle that says, hey, you know, I used to, uh, you know, help the school board or I've always been interested in doing this. If you have that angle about the company, that's really important because a lot of times where companies, especially in-house they hire for, besides all the, the basic skills, it's about the, are you a cultural fit for that company in terms of, of what they're looking for? So you can, you can show that when you interview, you can show that in your resume um, or things like that. So make sure you thoroughly research the company that you're looking to join and, and really believe that this is a good fit for what I want. And then I'd say the last thing is, is that, you know, we understand that uh, 1Ls don't have a lot of experience. You know, what do we rely upon? We may look at their GPA just to show that they're a good student, but even that is not as important, really. I think it's just more important that you need to come with your best foot forward, show that, you know, you're excited about the opportunity and you're excited to learn. For us, this is really more of a public service. You know, it's not like we are doing this for anything more than we feel like, hey, you know, for, I was successful because I was able to get this experience in-house while I went to law school. I want to make every one of my interns equally successful where if they want to have uh, and they really want to work in-house, that they have that skill set so that when they go into their job interview for their in-house job, they can speak to exactly what an in-house um, job opening um, is looking for. Judge Lee, can, can I jump on that real quick before you, before sure. you go? Sure. There's something I want to say that Sean says something that's really that resonates with me about, about cover letters, and this is sort of a constant source of conversation among me and the other coordinators. I think a lot of law students write cover letters almost restating their resume. Like, basically, I get to hear the resume all over again in the cover letter. Like, this is why I'm great. And to us, I think I speak for all, all for the coordinators, I say it's, it's a lost opportunity because I saw your resume. I know I can sort of match a lot of things on your resume with what we do. What you can use your cover letter for is to explain your particular interest in our program. And then you can refer to stuff in your resume to like as examples of why that's the case. But I think to, to us anyway, I think the cover letter is what Sean was talking about. Can you show some passion for the project, for the thing you're applying for? Can you show some interest? And can you, yeah, can you, don't use the resume to say more about yourself in a vacuum because the resume, sorry, don't use your cover letter because the resume's already done that. Use your cover letter to specifically explain what you, what connection you feel to this opportunity. And that's true for our job. That's true for when I was applying for clerkships. Um, you know, like anytime you could like hook up, like make a connection with yourself and a particular judge, you know, when I was applying for clerkships, that, that was important, you know, when we were doing those. 
Um, so yeah, that, that's what I wanted to say. I thought what you said, Sean, that that really struck a chord with me. And, and Amin, I actually want to build on that. I think that's a really good point. And I want to both ask and answer this question. So why do judges take externs or interns and especially first year? And I really think we do that as a public service. It's our way of giving back to the community and it's our way of investing in you. So when you are writing your cover letter, we're not so much interested in what value you can add to us, but if, if we're going to use economic terms, we're more interested on return on investment, right? So, so for, I have taken first years and what a number of us do is that we make sure that you are front and center when we're when we hear lawn motion in front of attorneys who appear in front of us. We will introduce you. We will uh, make sure that you have face time, and I think that makes it a little bit easier when you're applying for jobs. You know, either in your second summer or later after you graduate. Uh, we will also usually take time to edit uh, your writing so that you will have a sample. And then finally, uh, what some of us do is we will take you through our reasoning process. So you'll get to read the briefs and then you will sort of from the inside uh, learn how a judge makes a decision. And I recently had a first year who then was able to get a, a, a job his second year. And his parting words to me were, Judge, I can predict how you're going to rule in this case. I, I thought that was rather dangerous, but I think that was, that was an amazing insight, right? That's something you take to a firm. So that's sort of why I'm urging for, for if you know where you want to practice, Get to know the judges there. Get to know, get to figure out, you know, where you want to be, maybe too early if you want to go back home. You no, know, we can certainly get you a link to judges there. But I I really I I didn't do this during law school and, and I wish I'd done it because it would have been much, it would have been valuable. Great. Thank you, everyone. Um, so now let's talk about you know, how to apply. <laughs> um, we kind of dove into a little bit, but um, even just, just logistically, let's just start from a logistical standpoint. You know, how, how do you um, apply and, and when, I, I think is, is the other big question. Um, and I'll just start really quickly because I think law firms are pretty simple because as I already previewed for you guys, <laughs> uh, most, of, most of it happens actually your 2L summer, not your 1L summer. Um, it, it's it's a, a lot more rare to get a 1L summer um, law firm job. You'll need to look around, um, talk to your career center, see which law firms are doing um, some type of 1L program. A lot of them have diversity fellowships. Um, uh, so you, you, know, you, you can apply through um, something like that. Um, and then I also say just, just talk to people. I mean, um, for example, my firm is going to hire or is looking to hire a 1L summer, but it's not something that we were, we were advertising. <laughs> um, it's not something we typically do um, and, and you won't find it on our website, uh, but I'm telling you now. <laughs> um, so, you know, talk to people, um, you know, um, network, that type of thing, because um, it's, it's kind of like finding a, a diamond in the rough and then you wouldn't actually apply until um, after you get your, your 1L grades. Um, law firms are, uh, for better or for worse, very into <laughs> grades, um, and so you'll need that um, before applying. Um, as I mentioned before, I, I actually thought this was for all 1Ls, but maybe it's just for government jobs. I don't know, but I do, there's a December 1st. I'm, we, as far as we're concerned, there's a December 1st. That's the earliest that 1Ls can apply. I thought that was actually an arrangement among the law schools, but maybe someone, definitely ask your law school, ask your career office if there's a, if there's an earliest time you can apply, because I know that we cannot accept applications for December 1st. And when we get them before December 1st, we sort of politely but firmly tell the applicant, we're, I'm, we're not going to pretend we even got this. We're, you're going to have to reapply. Um, so, so definitely make sure you know what the sort of the, the, the starting line is uh, for that. Um, 
Other than that, it's a cover letter, resume, transcript, writing sample in a packet. We have, we're on the, the Simplicity website at various law schools, so that's sort of where you would apply through. Um, of those, for all three of the coordinators, the transcript is the, the least important. I would say the writing sample, cover letter, and resume, that's the most important, you know, as long as the, as long as the transcript sort of isn't on fire and like has a bunch of red flags on it, you know, I think that it's, it's, it's fine. That's not sort of how we're making our decisions. Um, having been in a law firm before, I can um, verify Kelly's assertion that law schools or, or law firms are kind of snobby about that kind of stuff. Um, but, um, but I think that other employers are not necessarily, we're not as, we're not as much about that degree. Um, but yeah, I think after that, then we'll, Logistically, I think we plan to be done hiring probably by the end of January or in the middle of February. We're fast for a government agency. A lot of government agencies are still hiring into March, April, um, but we just happen to sort of be moving at, at quicker speed. I think for us, we're, we're taking resumes whenever you're ready to apply. You just send an email to legal at opengov.com. Um, Depending on the budget that I can get, if I can get more than one intern, I'll hire more than one. Um, resume, cover letter, we don't ask for a transcript. Uh, a writing sample is what, what would be great. And then generally the way it works for us is that um, we have a talent management system. So once you um, apply, uh, you can also apply via our website. It, it will be posted at some point when I end up writing the, the job description. Um, you can apply that way too. Once you apply, and there'll be a, a host of interviews that you go through, uh, not just talking to the legal team, but also um, uh, some other members of the team that we work closely with, whether it's on the sales operations side or marketing side or things like that. I mean, I used to be accused of just only hiring Santa Clara grads. Um, I've since now that I have a team, I've expanded and looked at um, folks outside of Santa Clara. And last summer we had an intern that came from Rutgers and, and they were phenomenal. So I'm very excited now that we're a work from anywhere company, which by the way, I didn't know if um, we, I should mention this. I know that it's, it's a little different now with a lot of uh, companies not opening up their doors and we're one of them. So this would be a 100% remote uh, position though. If you are in the Bay area, I had a summer intern in, um, uh, last summer, who was based uh, not too far from where I lived in, in the Bay Area, we would get together for a coffee just so that they had that personal touch. It is a little bit hard, but we've managed to actually do very well doing everything remotely. So this position would be one that there wouldn't be a requirement. Um, if you decide to go home for the summer and you want to, to do the job from there, you'd be able to do it. Okay. And... Uh, pretty much externships, internships are all rolling. You know, you can decide to do it during the school year, as, uh, during a semester, you can decide to do it during the summer. And so we, there are 132 of us throughout California. You can figure out which ones you want. And I think I have, I think I have the requirements. So really, I, we're really not that interested in GPA. Again, remember this is more public service. We are interested in uh, resumes, CVs, and writing samples. And then finally, I, I, I saw something in the chat that I wanted to respond to. And I think it's, it's and I, I can't remember who it is. Um, it's Carrie. And Carrie said you were interested in public interest or big law. And, and you thought it was different, but it's not a contradiction. And I'm gonna explain why. So your first summer, you have a lot more leeway, right? Because you've got another summer to really figure out where you wanna be. So I, I always look at the first summer as sort of, a, a, you know, do what you love or figure out where you can learn the most. So I, I was really lucky. My first summer, I, I um, had, a, had a fellowship at the NAACP LDF, and I got to work on three Supreme Court cases. Now, we, we lost all of them, but still, it's a lot of, it's great experience. And so, so that really helped me get my job that second 
summer, it was a big firm. And then, uh, and then what I did is, you know, I did big firm work and then I went to the public sector. So then I ended up doing affirmative litigation for the San Francisco city attorney's office. And I got to work on tobacco litigation, again, Supreme court litigation and a number of big impact cases. But I, I am forever grateful for the training that I got at the big firms because they really have the time and the structure to do that. So I think that you could do both. You can often go back and forth. And I think more and more, there is that freedom that you have to decide what to do. I, I don't think that people look negatively right now on lateral moves or this back and forth. I think that's changed very much. So, so the way that I would look at it now is perhaps look at it not so much as, well, this is where I'm going to be, as opposed to, well, this is a place where I can get some skills, right? And the skills then end up being fungible. You can take that skill and then use it elsewhere. So, so Carrie, you can do both. In fact, I think it's great that you want to do both. Yeah, I want to echo that because when I saw Carrie's question, I was like, well, I was in a big law firm for 10 years and now I'm in government and I, I honestly love them both. And I, there's commonalities between them that cause me to love them. If you find the right firm or find the right agency and the people you work with and they share, like you sort of fit in their culture, um, that's really a big part of it. And then the work you do, you know, I was, and definitely me being, I definitely got this job because of the work I did at the appellate group and the Supreme Court practice at Aiken. And then I have interns who have interned for us over the summer and they've gone out and gotten a firm job because of the writing and oral advocacy work they did with us. So the, the skill sets are pretty interchangeable in a lot of ways. Yeah, and, and if you are interested in a law firm and you're doing um, OCI, I mean, we definitely are not necessarily looking at people who have worked as summer or their final year. We're looking for you know, what you did and what experiences you got and, you know, how you can, you know, how you talk about them um, in your interviews. So definitely, you know, your, your 1L summer, um, you know, go, go for that, go for the experience. <laughs> um, so I, I wanted to um, make sure I didn't miss um, talking about programs. Some of the, there's, you know, we're kind of talking about like, yeah, you can apply like to, you know, the Cal DOJ or whatever, but there's also kind of like these larger programs that you can apply to. Um, and we actually, I don't know how, uh, <laughs> how familiar are the panelists are with them, but I, let me just, I'll talk about one of them and then I'll, I'll open it up and, and hopefully someone can talk about like CIPS Day and, um, uh, and any others. Um, but um, the, the ABA section of litigation has this program called the Judicial Intern, Judicial Intern Opportunity Programs, J-I-O-P. Um, if you are interested in a judicial externship, um, then it's a good one to apply to because it will pay you. <laughs> I think it's $2,000. Most judicial externships are not paid. Um, so this is an opportunity to get a paid one. Um, and, and that's uh, really, really nice. Um, and, and you just apply to the program and you specify your location. Um, both San Francisco and LA are, are locations if you wanna um, stay in California, um, but there's others. You can also apply elsewhere. Um, and um, you do a screening interview with an attorney and then you know, if you pass that, your resume goes directly to the judge and then you interview with the judge and you're just, a, you know, when you're hired, you are just like a regular extern, just like the other externs that that judge has, um, but you are part of this program. And then, and again, you get paid. So <laughs> um, it, it's, it's a really great program. Um, I think applications open up in November and I think the deadline is in, in early January. So you do need to kind of think about it and, and, and plan ahead a little bit. And, and I'll say this is also open up, this is open to 1Ls and 2Ls. Um, this isn't just a 1L exclusive, although most, most of the people in the program are 1Ls. Um, so that, that's a, a really great um, program that uh, you can consider. Um, I mean, can you, do, you, do you guys do PIPS Day? Yeah, we've historically done PIPS Day. Uh, so it's exactly what it sounds like. It is a, um, it's a venue for public interest and public service employers to collect resumes, talk to you. We did it when it was live. 
Um, one of the issues with PIPS day for us, and this is just for our section, as I mentioned, we're on accelerated timetable. For whatever reason, we just start taking applications and looking through them earlier. So by the time PIPS day rolls around in early February, we're pretty done um, with our hiring. So when we were live, it was actually still really um, valuable to go because we'd have one else show up who didn't know what they wanted to do, and they would and they would give them the idea to apply for their second summer. And we would you know, we definitely see some of them around you know that summer. Um, but I think it's a great resource for people to apply to most government jobs because that is actually when most government job, uh, most government summer jobs are in their hiring are in like the really the, the rush of their hiring process. So it, it is, it's a great place. And I think it's virtual this year. I wanna say there's like an interview section and just like a table talk section where the table talk section is someone's at a virtual table and you just kind of drop in on them and chat with them and stuff. Um, they're both valuable. And uh, if you're interested in summering in, you know, for your one else summer in a government agency and you don't, or at a public interest employer um, and you don't have a position yet, it's a great place to go. I may want to add something just that uh, and it's a different program, Kelly, than what you mentioned, but I've had a couple of interns who actually are able to get credit um, as well as working as an internship in house. So I would check with um, your school uh, because some some jobs and again, you know, I'm more than happy to facilitate it. I did it with my last two interns. There's a little bit of paperwork that I have to fill out. But you know, on top of getting paid the measly you know minimum wage, you actually can actually get school credit for it too, is is which I know can be important for some folks. Um, so I do want to open it up to questions. We were hoping to budget some time for questions. Um, feel free to come off mute or to drop it in the chat. Um, this is this program is being recorded just as a disclaimer. <laughs> Um, if you do come off off mute, then you'll be you'll be recorded. <laughs> um, but you know, we're really here to to be a resource um, for you guys. Um, and so, if you have any questions, um, let us know. And since I know, I by, the, oh. by the way, when you're interviewing, asking a lot of questions is important too. I just, just want to throw that out there. You're more than welcome to start uh, testing that here. Always come prepared to play. And, and, and Kelly, like a... I'm, I'm going to add something also, which is when when you extern for a judge, you also, you know, if, if the relationship works out well, you get to use us as a reference. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that helps because I've had... I've had people call me and ask, and I think especially if you're in the same jurisdiction, I, I think it helps to have a judge as a reference. And I do see a number of people who are interested in um, IP law or tech transactions. Again, if we have a number of judges in Silicon Valley um, we also have some links to federal judges also. So that might be something uh, for you to look at because the way to think about a judicial externship is, is we're more like a food court where you get to see a lot of cases and you get to see what people file. You get to see what the standard is. And so it's sort of different from a sit down dinner where, you know, there's only there's only one restaurant as opposed to you know, one of those big food courts where you get to see 30 different restaurants, you get to try them out, you get to see what the level is. Right around dinner, I'm getting hungry. I know, me too. <laughs> um, uh, Blair, I think you you had a question. I, 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 okay, I kind of have two questions. One, one's like a quick one. I probably could just ask like my uh, student kind of support, but I, I guess like for 1L summer, you know, how many applications, you know, should we be like thinking about, you know, even sending out? You know, I've heard some people say they, they send out like 40, I've, you know, but also in my head, like I've never applied for 40 jobs in my life. So, you know, that just seems kind of like a lot. Um, so that's like one question. And then second, second question I think is, um, I guess for, for Kelly, um, you know, 
I mean, I, I'm definitely like interested in working for like a firm for specifically like learning purposes, because um, like they do have that structure, um, you know, and, and and that's something that like I know. Um, but I, but I I don't necessarily want to you know work in like a firm you know doing you know transactional work for forever. Is that something that like a is sort of like detrimental? Like like I guess um, saying that you know in an interview is that something that's like kind of detrimental? Or is that something that is like kind of understood? Um, or you know, I, I guess like what type of like time horizon, you know, should we be like, you know, um, you know, should, should we be communicating, understanding that, you know, that there is sort of a transaction with like, you know, having a, you know, entry or like a, like a, you know, new associate and like making sure that like, if you get all that training, you know, you don't leave in like a year or something. Yeah. But let me, let me take that last <laughs> question really quick. Um, I, I, AIA would not tell them that you're only planning on being there for a year or two. Okay. Yeah. Um, because honestly, it's a lot, it's a big investment, um, for us to train, you know, to train associates. Um, and we don't, you know, we, we understand the game. Like we know that most associates are going to leave and most associates are not going to stay there and become partner, but we don't want to like hear that up front. Um, mm -hmm. so, you know, and, and, and so, you, and don't feel like you're being like, deceitful either by by saying that because b you you know you don't know <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. you know I, when i came to to Frella, i did not come with the intention of making of staying and making partner um i i always thought i i do public interest work frankly um and but i liked you know i i came and i really liked it more than i thought i would and and i stayed um so you might think that you you, you won't want to work at a law firm um and it might turn out that you do so, you know, I just like, you know, leave that, leave that door open, um, you know, I'll, but again, law firms, law firms know the deal. They know that most people leave um, and, you know, th there's no, you know, set amount of time. Like, you know, a lot of people, you know, stay, you know, one year, two years, three, whatever. Um, yeah, I'll say it, it, it's probably harder to lateral if you only have one year of experience. If most people stay a couple of years because you kind of need that time to get the experience. Uh, before you you move on um but yeah that, that's that's pretty typical um actually was so every year that i was at the firm and and you know i didn't leave that long ago um i was told by the people in in biz dev and in hr and like that that firms break even on their associates somewhere around year three or four so they pay you a certain amount, right? But they're also writing off your hours and stuff like that because you know you're just not as productive as someone who's more senior. So every firm's summer offer is a bet. Am I going to have this person around long enough that they are going to make back the money that we're losing on them over the first couple of years? So it's sort of a that's the proposition, right? The proposition is like Kelly said, you can't give them the idea that you're going to leave after a year or two because then they're just pouring money, they're just throwing money away. Um, I say this because. Um, I learned this lesson the hard way, my summer, my firm summer, I had a firm summer for a second year, where I build the most hours out of all the summer associates, but I also didn't get an offer. And it's because I thought as long as I was working a lot, I could do things like not go to partner barbecues and like not go to certain events, but like, oh, those are just social events. Why don't I need to go to those? And it's because they want to know that you're going to be a firm citizen. And this is not nefarious. I think this is good, right? They want to build a firm culture. They want people who want to be there both for economic reasons and for morale reasons. And if you're giving the vibe that you're not, that you're not even open to the idea of staying there. Like Kelly's right. They know a lot of people go to firms being like, I'm gonna make some money, I'm gonna leave. But I stayed for 10 years. Like I gave it, a, I, the firm I ended up with, I gave a chance and I really liked it. So I think that, that you, you gotta go in with a genuinely open mind and you have to at least show them that you're in there with an open mind and that you're willing to kind of at least entertain the idea of being there. Yeah, uh, sorry, to answer your other question, I, I think it's really, I don't know, I, it's a hard question. Like, I've always been a low application person myself, so um, it, I, I don't know. Like, I've never, like, sent out more than, like, when I, I sent out fewer than 10 applications for college, 10 applications for law school, like, for summer jobs, it was, the only thing I really blanketed was clerkships, because I really was, like, I just want to clerk somewhere um, after, I graduated from, after I graduated from law school. But I, I don't know. I feel like that's your own sense of like risk aversion. It's like whatever your whatever your you know career office is telling you. 
Kelly, can we take a moment and and answer that question that that's right there? Because I think it's a great question. I'm going to read it. To so, what would you say was the best move you've made early on in your career? So, Kelly, you go first. <laughs> oh my God. Um... I, I think I need to think about that. That's the, the best move I've made. Um, does anyone else have any any thoughts on that while I, while I kill time thinking? Um, I, I'll, I'll answer that okay. because I, I, I actually had an answer. So I, I, I've had a career where I think I've, I've done everything. I've done government work. I've done big firm work, private practice work. I've, but I've done both defense and plaintiffs. And... I think that the best move I made was right after law school, I was offered a teaching fellowship. And so I spent about five years teaching evidence at Stanford Law School. You know, I never practiced, which is always a bad idea. So I was only, I think, a chapter ahead of my students. No, I, I would I would bone up and whenever someone would ask me a question, I would say, well, that's just a matter of California law. You know, let's focus on federal law, you know, and, and then I'd look it up the night before. But that that gave me an opportunity to then leapfrog because then I could come in as an expert. So there there that's what I mean. Start start thinking out of the box. There is the usual step by step that people think, but I really think that as long as you gain skills at every step, that's really what matters. And I don't think that you can make a bad choice. Um, Kelly, have you have you come up with an answer yet? Oh, you guys should just go before me. Go ahead. <laughs> John, do you have an answer? That's actually you're muted too. Uh, well, I'm just gonna say, Judge Lee, it's just awesome hearing you talk. I, I just, it's so, it's so great to have you on this panel and everything that you do. Um, I think for me, uh, uh, what what has been probably maybe not the best move, but the move that everyone should think about doing when it talks about their career, it's building your network. Yeah. I I don't necessarily apply for jobs anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, the jobs I get are because I work at Oracle and Apple and Intuit. And I work with some very powerful people who are, you know, sort of set the, the seeds in Silicon Valley. And whenever I want to go and I find that there's a company I'm interested in joining, I go with my network. And that network is the one that, that helps me get my next job. So it's really important, I think, for you, wherever you're at, even, even whether you're doing a clerkship or you're working in-house, those early networks that you build are the ones that are going to seed you for your jobs throughout your future. Um, mine is simple. I got a clerkship out of law school. I, mean, I, I really, to this day, I feel like it's the best job I could have had out of law school. I was always litigation centric. I was never going to do transactional work. I was always going to do litigation. And it's not just the skills of it's not just the writing skills and the, as Judge Lee mentioned before, it's like sitting on, being on that side of the bench, right? Like learning how decision making is made. It's also the opportunity to, no matter who the judge is, it's someone who has been through a lot to get there. They have accumulated so much experience and practice. And especially when you're coming out of law school, um, I feel like you've, you know, you've just like absorbed a lot of information. I think you sort of have, you know, you can research and, and you're, you're smart, but you're not wise yet. And I think I think it's both my judges, I thought were extremely wise. Like they were people who really had a great sense of the equities and of like how justice works. And that sounds kind of maudlin, but it, it, I, I genuinely believe that like that's the best thing I could have learned was just like people who really, really care about justice and doing justice and, and sort of taking like a wise experience approach to it. Awesome. Um, well, I, I have come up with an answer this time. And just so you guys know, I'll, I'll give my answer and then we'll wrap it up because I know that we're a little <laughs> over time now. Um, and, and it threw me off because I, I actually didn't move around. I mean, I, I've just been at Ferella <laughs> my entire career. Um, but what I, I will say is, um, and, and it's a little bit of what Sean said, uh, you know, getting involved in bar association work. Um, you, you know, I, as I said earlier, I, I was interested in, in doing public interest. 
um, initially when I went to law school, but I have found a lot of fulfillment in doing bar association work and feeling like I'm, you know, giving back um, to the community. Um, and then also just meeting a bunch of, of really awesome people <laughs> um, who do really awesome things um, and being able to call them friends. Um, so, um, you know, I, I think, you know, get involved in bar associations and that will also segue into me saying, <laughs> Yeah, this this event was put on by the by ABBA, um, and I know that a lot of you guys, based off of the RSVPs, are not yet members. Um, it's only twenty five dollars um, to become a member as a law student, and it lasts the entire three years. So as a one L, you are getting the most value <laughs> if you join ABBA now. Um, and if you join ABBA, you can join um, us for a holiday party. It's in person. It's December second at Harborview. Um, and you, and we are restricting it to just ABBA members um, because of the, the space limitations. Um, and it's, it's kind of our, our first big in-person event since the pandemic. Um, so good incentive um, to join ABBA there <laughs> and come to, come to our holiday party. Um, and with that said, I wanna thank all of our panelists. You know, I thought that your insight was just absolutely fantastic um, and, and really valuable. Um, so thank you so much for speaking and thanks everyone else, um, all the law students uh, for joining us and, and hopefully you found this helpful. I think I speak for all of our panels and I say, you know, feel free to reach out um, to us if, if you have any other you know, follow-up questions that, that you didn't get to ask. Um, so yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Hi, thank you. Bye everyone. Thank, thank you so much. much.